On this episode of Doing the Most, we are going to look at 10 things for you to keep in mind as a beginner home brewer. I give a lot of home brewing advice here on the channel, advice relevant to beer, mead, cider, and wine. And I get a lot of beginners and intermediate brewers who come across the channel looking for tips or advice or just ideas on things that they could be doing in their own home brewing adventures. So for this episode, I thought it might be fun, especially for those of you who just got a home brewing kit for the first time for Christmas or for the holidays, to go through some things that you might wanna keep in mind as you start your brewing adventure. And if you've been brewing for a while and you're watching this video and you have tips not included in this video, please make sure to drop them in the comments for folks who are following along with this video. Number one, you're gonna screw up and that's fine. I've brewed a lot. I've made a lot of batches and not every single one of them comes out great. In fact, a lot of them have gotten dumped out in the backyard and that's okay. Every batch is a learning process and even if it's not great, if it's still drinkable, it's still a success. You made it, you bottled it, you're proud of it. Stick it back for a year and see how it turns out. Not every brew is gonna end up perfect. Screwing up is part of the process. It's how we learn. And so it's okay if you mess something up the first few times. Number two, there's a lot of bad advice out there. You're really gonna wanna find somewhere with trusted advice. And BrewTube can be a great place to find that advice. I've got a lot of friends in the home brewing world and they provide tested, trusted advice that you can follow. There is a lot of bad advice out there. And just ask around on Facebook or Reddit or on Discord for people's recommendations for channels and blogs and Instagram accounts and TikTok accounts that they believe provide good advice. But make sure to always vet that advice before you employ it in your home brewing. I like to think that our channel is full of lots of tested, trusted advice on how to succeed at home brewing. And part of that is why I wrote my ebook you can make mead that walks you through how to make mead and gives you 20 different recipes that I've tested that will work for you. Number three, some things are easy and some things are hard to brew. A great example is a high alcohol traditional mead. Say you wanna make a traditional mead, just honey, water, and yeast, and you want it to be 18% ABV. That can be difficult to make, not just to get it to finish fermentation, but to get it to taste good at some point. Balancing really comes into play with your sweetness, your acidity, and your tannin. Brewing beer can be really difficult. If you've got a complex beer recipe with tons of different hops and malt and specialty yeast, and if you're doing all grain with a mash and a sparge and a boil, there's a lot to keep up with and it can be difficult to get things right the first few times. Some things are really easy to make though, like a good delicious cider, and we've got a recipe for that. Try to avoid jumping into the deep end when you first start out. Sometimes it's easier to just kind of slowly work your way up as your skills progress. Number four, no beginner kit is perfect. Some include things that others don't and those may include things that the other ones don't. And I would suggest if you got a kit for Christmas or if you are looking to buy a kit to really get an idea of what kits tend to include maybe pick the one that's the most cost effective and then a la carte buy a few things that you know that your kit is lacking. For example, say you get a kit that's got nutrients and yeast and all the gear like airlocks and buckets and stuff that you want, but maybe it doesn't come with a hydrometer. Well, compare that to other kits that do include a hydrometer because it's an incredibly important tool and figure out if you need a kit or an a la carte solution to make sure you've got everything you need including that hydrometer. Number five, pick up a book. I've got a whole video on my recommendations for homebrewing books, and I'll link that video in the description of this video. I also have my own ebook that's available, but what I would recommend is to read reviews for the books that you're looking at and choose ones that align with what you're looking to get out of your brewing. One that I love to recommend is Jack Keller's Home Winemaking Book. It's very simple, has lots and lots and lots of information about a lot of different ingredients. And even if you don't use the recipes included in Jack's book, 
using those recipes to build out your own recipe can be really helpful because of the advice he provides about why he chooses the different ingredients. It's okay to pick up a book and learn the old fashioned way. I have tons of home brewing books on my shelf and I reference them quite a bit. Number six, use a proper yeast. It's the best way to avoid mold. You know, proper yeast in my definition doesn't typically include bread yeast, but I would recommend bread yeast every day of the week over trying to do a wild fermentation as an inexperienced brewer. Sure, the grapes that you're brewing with, the apples you're brewing with have yeast on them and it might lead to an okay product. However, you're at a high likelihood of getting mold or some other infection if you're not using a yeast that's intended for brewing. I like to recommend wine yeasts and ale yeasts because they're trusted. They come from manufacturers who make these yeasts to do what they do and do it well. And so the best way to avoid mold is to use a yeast intended for brewing so you get a big healthy fermentation early, which helps offset some of the risk of getting mold or some other kind of pellicle that might turn your brew sideways. And if you get mold, dump it out. Number seven, follow a recipe, at least till you get the first one or two batches out of your system. Now, you might be like me and not follow a recipe at all the first few times. That's okay. However, the best way to get something even close to resembling a good batch in your first few tries is to repeat something that somebody else has did and loved. And that goes back to trusted sources of information. A recipe book by someone who has a reputation for award-winning wines or meads or beers is a great place to start. But again, there are some good places online to find recipes as well. Number eight, you might need to age it. Now, age does not improve every brew, especially beers. Beers tend to go sideways a lot quicker than something like a wine or a mead. But everything you're gonna home brew, whether it's a wine, a cider, a mead, or a beer, has a bell curve where it gets better and then it starts to taper off getting worse. So if you don't like something that you've made, maybe it's a cider and it's only three months old, age it another three months or another three months, maybe age it a year before you put it in bottles to see how that develops. Sometimes age is really helpful at bringing the good flavors forward and muting some of the things that you don't necessarily like. Number nine, sanitizing. Make sanitizing a part of your routine. You don't want your batch to get infected. You don't want it to grow mold or get infected with some kind of bacteria that's not the yeast you put in it. So using a no rinse sanitizer like Starzan is an excellent way of really, really reducing the risk of infection. Just make it a part of your routine, sanitize anything that's gonna come in contact with your brew. And finally, number 10, maybe home brewing's just not for you. And that would be okay. If you're brand new to this, I wanna welcome you to the hobby. I hope you enjoy it, but not every hobby is for every person. I tried running for a while. There were some days where I would run three to five miles a day and I hated it. I never loved it. And eventually I just stopped doing it because why do something that you don't love? And home brewing can be the same way. You might wanna try it. You might wanna watch the exciting process of all the foam coming up while you're fermenting. But then, you know, you might find that you don't really care for racking to secondary or you really hate bottling day. I also hate bottling day. Maybe home brewing's not for you, but I would encourage you to try it out anyway because you might find that it is for you and you might fall in love with the hobby and then you've unlocked a whole new world for yourself. Now, home brewing's for me. I really enjoy it. I love the recipe building process and my brew year's resolution for 2024 is to tackle some big mead styles that I haven't really ever dabbled in before. One of those being coffee mead. And I thought it might be fun, especially for those of you who are new to brewing, to see some of the brewer's resolutions from the doing the most brewing community. And so we're gonna end this video with some user submitted clips of folks from my community telling you what their plan is for 2024. This brewer's resolution, I'd really like to nail down dry mead. You know, I started out making sweet, and lately I've been making semi-sweet, but I just really want to knock out dry mead. My brew year's resolution is to get my brewing space organized so that I can get back into brewing. So when it comes to 2024, 
my goals is when it comes to mead is to finally open my commercial meadery. I've been working on it for a little over a year now, and 2024 is the year that we're going to finally open. So here's to 2024. Everybody have a wonderful year. This resolution is to make a good matcha mead. It's come up a couple times, um, and no one really seems to have a good answer for it, so I figured, why not me? My New Year's resolution is to enter more competitions that are local and to also try to be homebrewer of the year for my homebrew club. My brewer's resolution is to continue some of my Method Champenois stuff to finish up the Mead Tools website and to hopefully start on some barrel age stuff. My Mead New Year's resolution is to make more session meads and to be a advocate for mead by serving it at more public outings. I also would like to earn another Mazer Cup. My Brewer's resolution is to enter a few competitions this year and brew something that's not a doing the most recipe. I actually want to make my own recipe this year. My Brewer's resolution is to make a braggot. This year, as I rebuild my brew space, I'd like to make it better organized and I'd also like to take my uh, Tapache game to the next level. I want to bump the ABV up a little bit, and I want to use more additional fruits and flavors to complement the pineapple. My Brewer's resolution for 2024, it's going to be a special one. Uh, my 10-year-old son and I, we're going to get together. We're going to um, build and brew a large batch of mead that I can then age for the next 10 years and it'll be the first drink that we share on his 21st birthday.